Okay, uh, so this is the concluding lecture on basically the singular value decomposition. And uh, what I thought I'd do today is give you basically uh, a little tour or a warm up of how you might do things like face recognition, okay? So that's going to be our application, face recognition, and how you might write software that would be able to do such tasks. And so what I want to go through today is some ideas uh, of, of what people have thought about for a while. In fact, this has been around for a while under the name of what's called eigenfaces, and which is also related to what we've been talking about, which is principal components. And all of this is related directly to the singular value decomposition. So mostly we're going to program and my hope is to demonstrate through example uh, the power of the singular value decomposition. Now let's recap real quickly what it does. If you remember, you give me a data matrix A. Okay? You have a certain number of rows and columns. If you remember from the last lecture, what we're looking for are things that are correlated among the data. What things are independent, what things are redundant. And in order to figure this out in terms of if we think about stacking our data in a matrix, what we want to figure out is the correlations among the different pieces of information in these different rows or columns. And to get at that, we can apply this singular value decomposition. which breaks this matrix up into three components. What this tells you here, these are called the singular values. It's a diagonal matrix ordered along the diagonal from biggest to smallest. And these tell you sort of principal directions. And it also tells you how important each of the principal directions are. The principal directions themselves are columns of this matrix U. And what the V tells you is for that data how each individual piece of data, let's say from row one or row two, projects on to these principal component directions. Now, that's what we had talked about last time. It's intimately related also to looking at correlation matrices such as this, right? So we had talked about this correlation matrix uh, and C, let's call it C which tells you uh, essentially how much information each row is, is in each row compared to the next row. So this is going to tell you something about how much each piece of each row of information is related to the other rows, right? So there's this idea of redundancy. There's this idea of diagonalization. There's an idea of projecting onto directions which are minimal in some sense. Okay? So when we talked about this with that spring system, what we were trying to do is diagonalize this as much as possible, which is equivalent to this matrix here. If you remember, the eigenvalues of this correlation matrix are the same, are related to the singular values of the SVD. So you can either look for eigenvalues of that matrix or single values of the matrix. They're going to be equivalent. There's a factor of there's a square root factor that's relating the two. Okay, so what is our data in this case for image processing? So let's come over here. So we want to think about taking pictures for, for face recognition. So I have an image of somebody. Okay? I can think of this image as just a data matrix, right? I have a, a picture, and if you look at any of your cameras, you have a certain number of pixels in X and Y. And those pixels in X and Y direction represent the image. So for instance, you might have you know, 800 by 600 pixels to represent this image. And each pixel location is just basically a brightness and a color. We're going to mostly work with gray and uh, black and white grayscale type images. So every pixel is just going to be a number that tells you if it's zero, it's white. 
If it's one, it's black. Anything in between is gray. And from that, we can construct an image, pixel by pixel. Now, what are we going to do with this? This is just one image. It's one piece of data. And what I'm looking to construct is my data matrix, A. And what I want in my data matrix, A, the way we're going to work with this, is a set of images. Image 1, it's going to be, let's say, in the first row. Image 2, it's going to be the second row, all the way to image N. So I've been in images, and I'm just going to stack them up. But wait a minute, my image is already a matrix. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to reshape that matrix into a vector. So you can lay down this vector row by row. So that's one picture you put in here. But you're not putting it in as a matrix. You're putting it in as a vector. OK? So there's a very simple way. This is called uh, matrix to vector conversion. OK? So you're going to take this thing. And you can think about it as chopping up rows and basically saying, OK, let me take that top row, which is where the hair is, put it onto the second row, and then just stack the second piece on here, which is this row of pixels, which is sort of this where the eyes are, and then stack here the third picture, which is part of the mouth and nose, and then the fourth picture, which is the neck region, and then some hair, and a little bit of that bottom smile. So for instance, I can take this, turn it into a vector. That's it. So if I had four rows of pixels, I would just stack it into, so if suppose this was four by four, four rows of pixels, four columns of pixels, I could stack it up into all those four rows and put them back to back to back. And what this makes is a row vector that now has 16 pixels, where I'm just stacking the data. And I put this into my data matrix. Okay? And what I'm going to do for face recognition is I'm going to start thinking about what I want to put in here. In particular, I'm going to have an example. We're going to try to do a very simple face recognition task. We're going to take some pictures of some celebrities. We're going to stack them up. And we're going to try to figure out uh, What's sort of, in some sense, the principal component representation of each of these celebrities? And how would you take a new picture of the celebrity and decide, you know, if I were to do a task and have a database with a bunch of pictures of the celebrities, and I give you a new picture of a celebrity that's in my database, could I say, oh, who is this? And could you project onto these images, and could it identify the appropriate celebrity? OK? So it's going to be our little, uh, our little task. So, most of it's going to be on the computer, but I want you to have this clearly in mind. Our data are pixel values from pictures that are made into vectors. That's it. And from here, if you want to look at correlations, so for instance, if I took one celebrity's pictures and a bunch of pictures, what would the SVD tell me? It would tell me the right modes that represent that celebrity in, in the ideal basis. Okay. So let's show this by demonstration. So I'm going to come over here to the computer. I'm going to pop this thing open. Oop. Here we go. I can remember my password. There we are. So first of all, I start off with this blank screen, because I think many of you have been wondering, hey, what's that background saver he has? And look at that. It's a beautiful cappuccino uh, made right in my office. No, you cannot buy it. Just like many of the best things in life aren't for sale, so is this. You just have to, like, you know, I make these all the time for my friends. Uh, so, like, if you become phrase, you know, friends with me, not like a Facebook friend, I don't, like, a little higher level than that, you know, I'll come to my office and you can have a cappuccino. But I thought I'd just show it to you and show off a little bit of my, uh, a little bit of artwork there. You see that? That's like sort of abstract art on the latte pour. I do some nice fern leaves as well. All right, so now that you're so impressed with that, we can move off and, and talk about face recognition. OK. Uh, OK, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull up a little uh, programming interface here. 
And what I'd like to do to start off, there's a bunch of code here. Uh, the fact is, it's going to be a, a little bit more intense coding. So I've already pre-programmed the entire code. And we're just going to walk through um, what I want to do here. OK, so first of all, I'm going to put a break statement here. I'm going to just start doing step by step. I'm going to copy in a first line here. And we're going to go through what this does. I'll put it up here for now. All right, so first of all, I have some pictures. So I could do the following. I am read. Uh, what this does is uh, the I am stands for image read. And I give it a picture, Clooney 1. And it is a JPEG. And what this will do is it will go find the picture called Clooney1.jpg. And it will load it into the computer here. So if I run this thing, OK. Oh, shoot. OK, never mind. That's fine. <laughs> I just did something kind of dumb. Uh, but that's all right. We'll, we'll just go through this. And if you look at this thing, what it did, if you look here on answer, look at what it pulled up. It pulled up. Let's, let's make this call it like something like A equals image read clean one. So when I run this thing, what it's going to do is it creates a matrix A. And by the way, I probably want to put semicolons there. So I can do size A. So what this is, uh, it's an image, by the way, of George Clooney I pulled off the web. It's uh, 157 by 112 pixels. But wait a minute, it's 157 by 12 by 3. What's that 3 doing there? It is a color picture. So every pixel location of this 157 by 12 actually has three values because it has a color, RGB specified color. So in other words, this thing is a data cube, 157 by 12 by 3. The three values tell you the color at each location. Okay? If we want to see this image, you go, I am show, image show A. If you do it, there it is. George Clooney. All right, so we'll pick George Clooney as one of our celebrities. OK? Uh, and, and there's the image that I, I took off the web. Uh, and that, in fact, images off the web, of course, as you know, are like trivial to get. And so uh, I pulled this one off. And in fact, I've pulled off a bunch of George Clooney's and, and various celebrities that we're going to walk through. OK. Now at this point, uh, the data itself is, in fact, image data. So it's not even a matrix of data. If you want to turn this image into uh, data, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the following. I'm going to turn this image into from an RGB, which is colored, to grayscale. And this is very easy to do by RGB to gray. So it's going to take an RGB picture and turn it into a grayscale. Now if I run this and show it, there's the grayscale figure. OK? So we're sort of doing some initial processing uh, of data just by using simple MATLAB commands. Uh, but the data itself, the type of data it is, if you come over here, I don't know if you can read this very well, but it says here the data is uint8. And by the way, now, by making it grayscale, it's 157 by 112 pixels. That's it. There's no color, so you don't need the color RGB cube. You just have, for every single pixel location, it just has a value which corresponds to where it is on the grayscale. But the data format is called uint8. They're integers. You want to see them? See that? They're all integers. Between 1 and 256, or 255, or something like that. It's a color cube. or coordinates, essentially. Um, and they're all integers. So right now, it's not a matrix we can play around with until we do the following. I want to make it double precision numbers, so I just do double. And when I say double, what's going to happen is it's going to make it uh, double precision. And now, I am show won't work, because I am show only takes in uh, integer type values. So when I do this, See, it just nothing comes up there. 
So now A itself is a matrix. So if I say size A, same size matrix, but check it out. It's double precision numbers. So now I can use things like some of my plotting routines, like P color. And that is a top view of the data. Oh, and there it is. There's Clooney upside down, because Clooney now is just a matrix. Okay? And if I want to actually view this right side up, I have to use this command called flip, a flip command. I could just say P color, flip UD, which is going to turn it upside down. And then there it is. Okay? I can do more than that. I can, don't want to see all those pixels. There's 157 by 12. I can say, well, how about a shading interp? That's going to interpolate, it's going to take off and see it interpolates values between. It gives me a nice clean picture. And I can, if I'd like, make it color map gray. It's going to make it grayscale. There it is. There it is. OK. There's the picture. And all I'm plotting now is a matrix. OK. This data, I took it from being an image to being a matrix. This is the matrix of data we want to start thinking about working with. Okay? So that's just one picture. But I could tell you what we want to do is now do a comparison between a bunch of pictures. And so what I've done is I've gone out and grabbed a bunch of pictures. So let me go ahead and take care of this here. And let me bring up some code that's going to do this. So I'm going to introduce you some code here all the way down to here. Break. One other command in here that I want to point out to you that's at the end here. Uh, very important command. Every single image I grabbed off the ed, uh, web has different resolutions. So some of them have, uh, you know, 800 by 600 pixels. Some are 415 by 373. And I want to make them all the same. See this image resize command where it says I am resize? What you can do is take any image, and by applying the I am resize, and you tell it the pixels you want. I want 120 by 80. Okay, It's going to have 120 pixels in one direction, in the vertical direction, sorry, horizontal direction, 80 in the vertical. So for every image I pull off the web, I'm going to go ahead and do an image resize. So for instance here, take a look at C1 versus Clooney1. Image resize, what I'm going to do is go grab Clooney1.jpg. I'm going to do an image read on it. RGB to gray, which means I'm going to turn it to grayscale. So I read it in, turn it to grayscale. The double command, what the double command does, turns it into a data matrix. And the image resize turns it into 128 by pixels. And that is C1. And then I have five pictures here of George Clooney. And once I get those five pictures read in, I'm going to go ahead and say, OK, let's go ahead and plot it on a subplot. Four rows. Five columns, the first picture, P color. I'm going to flip it upside down. I'm going to put shading in terp, make it nice and smooth, color map gray it. And then I do some, I make sure there's no tick marks on the X and Y direction. I'm going to do that with Clooney. I've got Obama. I got Margaret Thatcher. And I got one other. There you go. These are my pictures. These are my database of pictures we're going to work with today. I've got George Clooney. Barack Obama, Margaret Thatcher, and Jason Bourne. OK. Pretty hard to get a picture of Jason Bourne, but uh, dang. <laughs> pretty good stuff, right? Uh, he's also known as Matt Damon in some circles. I was in Boston last year. You know, we were hanging out all the time, me and, me and Matt. We were fist bumping, all kinds of good stuff. So here's going to be the objective. I'm going to take these pictures. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to figure out what are sort of the principal components of a Matt Damon or a George Clooney or a Obama. And if I give you a new picture of, let's say, one of somebody else like Mar Margaret Thatcher, that's not part of the database or the training. This is called a training set because I have all these pictures. If I give you a new picture of Margaret Thatcher, would this algorithm be able to tell you, oh, yeah, uh, I've identified this person and the it's the closest match is to row three there, Margaret Thatcher. 
What you'd hate to do is give me a new picture of Margaret Thatcher and it says, oh, this looks like Clooney. Okay? So part of what image recognition does is you never get an exact match, but what you'd like to do is to do a good classification of what that image is. Okay? So that's going to be sort of our task-centric focus today. So those are our pictures. Uh, the next step I want to do is, you see I've got five images of George, of Barack, Margaret, Jason. So let's go ahead and maybe think about what's the average George Clooney face look like? What's the average Obama face look like? Now what you'll see here is I've cropped all these images to be about the same size, headshot, right? And, uh, and that's important. You can't, generically, you just can't put in any random size picture in here. What I'm trying to do is look at the correlations among the different pictures to see if you can see uh, defining themes or correlated structures in the faces. What is, what is it about Barack Obama that makes you identify Barack Obama the way he is? Okay, so what are those principal components in some sense? So that comes to the next piece, which is looking for here, the average face. So here we have the average Clooney face. I take all five pictures, add them, and divide by five. They're matrices, so I can just do this. Add up all the Obama, divide by five. And in figure two, I'm going to show these. So there's figure two. And what this is, is what I've done is taken here, this is the average uh, face of George Clooney, the average Obama face, Thatcher face, average Matt Damon, Jason Bourne face. Uh, and what you could see from these is that, you know, basically they're obviously smeared out. I didn't do careful alignment, but in some sense what you would like to do in robust vision processing or computer vision processing, the alignment process is going to be hard. Maybe someone's tilting their head, maybe someone's smiling, maybe someone has their eyes closed. Uh, these things all create uh, uncertainty in, in sort of trying to figure out the person, but you can still see, even by averaging, you can pretty much still see, oh, you know, there's a, that's Obama, that's Jason Bourne, Thatcher, you can kind of see who the person is there. So the averaging is an, is an important concept in this. Okay. Now, look what we're going to do in the data matrix. My data matrix right here, D, is going to be my data matrix. What do I do? Let's talk about what I'm going to do at each row. The reshape command allows you to take a matrix and turn it into a vector or vice versa. So the first command here, the first row of my data matrix, what is it? I take C1, which is Clooney 1, and I reshape it into a one row by 120 times 80 columns. So I took this 120 by 80 picture, and I shaped it into one row with 120 by 80 columns, okay? Just like I had drawn on the board. That is going to be uh, what we're going to do with this. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to run this. I'm going to come up to the board. It's going to take a little while to run. Okay, so let's come up here back to the lecture. So you see what I've got now. Let's talk about the data. I have at least from this, I have five pictures of four celebrities, right? So I have 20 rows of images, or 20 rows of data. Each row is a picture. The first five rows are going to be George Clooney. The next five rows are going to be Barack Obama. The next five, Margaret Thatcher. The next five, Matt Damon. Okay? These are celebrities I picked. And by the way, I can tell you why I picked them. Well, okay. One of the reasons I picked them is uh, I put them in the book, right? And have hopefully uh, you can look at section 2.5 and the pictures on the book. And I didn't want to pay anybody to like, you know, use their professional pictures. I wanted just free pictures. And these are on the Wiki Commons and you can use them for free. So I, I had some other celebrities picked out. Like I had Roger Federer, tennis great. But I couldn't find enough pictures of Roger Federer that were free. Now you may think I'm cheap, but um, which might be true. But you know, look, I'm gonna go with free pictures if I can get them. Uh, so I have the pictures just lined up, and they're gonna make this giant matrix. 
So what am I going to do with this matrix? Well, what I really want to do with this matrix is I want to look for common features among these faces. This is my database. And you know, generically, if you're looking at a face database, you'd make this much, much, much bigger than actually we're working with here. Okay? But in general, you take this A matrix and you're going to look at this. What is it? The correlation matrix of this matrix times itself. The transpose of this matrix times itself. And what does it do? If you do the multiplication, it says, what is the correlation or the variance in image 1 with, with image 1? And then you say, well, the next row is going to give me the variance of image 2 with image 1. In other words, these are two Obama, these are two Clooney pictures, and you're looking for the commonality in those two pictures. There should be redundancy, right? I mean, if Clooney looks like Clooney in all these different pictures, you'd imagine that the correlation score between image 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 should be pretty high. However, once you get down here to row 6, now you've switched to Barack Obama. And so when you take a correlation between Barack Obama and George Clooney, you, you, you shouldn't get as high a correlation score. They do have common features. Both have eyes, both have noses, both have a mouth, both have like some hair and a chin. And in fact, the dominant feature of all faces, there's a lot of correlation between all of these. The average overall face of all of these is sort of this average face that has chin, eyes, nose, mouth. All of them have it. And what you're looking to do is to say, yeah, but Outside of the, the, the average face, what defines a George Clooney or a Barack or a Margaret Thatcher or a Matt Damon? That's kind of the thing you're after here. And this is what this matrix will start to tell you. Okay? So this is one way to do it. You could say, I will construct this correlation matrix. And right in MATLAB, you would just say C is equal to, actually, we call this D in the code. You would say uh, D transpose times d. And then one way to do this is you could say, oh, but I want the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this. And you could say, okay, go grab them, eigs. And put the matrix C in, and I'll tell you what these are. The eigs command, which you've already learned about eigenvalues, eigs will go grab the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix C. And here what you're going to ask it to do is go grab me the largest, largest magnitude 20 eigenvectors possible. So if you don't specify this, you know, it will give you potentially more. The way we set this up is 20. But here, give me the 20 with the largest magnitude. Okay? That's what this thing will do. Eigs will give you this. And what are the two quantities coming back? D is a diagonal matrix. The diagonal elements of this, the eigenvalues, tell you, are arranged from largest to smallest, the largest being sort of the most important and the smallest being the least important. And V are the eigenvectors. Okay? This is why it's called eigenfaces. These eigenvectors, the first eigenvector of this sort of has this dominant average face. The second eigenvector tells you about more structure that's on top of the average face. What are the other features? Feature space is really important. The idea is outside of the average, what do these vectors tell you about the kind of features that a computer algorithm would look for to identify individuals? This is one way to get it. We will do this here in the code. Another way to do exactly the same thing is just simply to say, OK, you want the same thing here? Then you can just say, look, how about we cal calculate the following, SVDC. U, S, V. These are essentially going to be equal to each other. What do I get out here? Three matrices. The S matrix is basically, uh, let me say, so the, let me say, I'll say this. The, uh, these are like the square root of the diagonals of this. 
Okay, if you remember last time, there's a relationship between the eigenvalues here and the singular values, and it's related by a square root. The U matrix is essentially equivalent to columns, the V the eigenvectors here. So these are equivalent, these are related by a square root, and what the V tells you is how each image itself projects on to these eigenvectors and modes. Okay, and that's the last piece we want to understand is this idea of a projection on the eigenvalues and eigenmodes. So let me talk about that. So let's say we have from here this thing, and what I want to do is if I give you a new matrix, a new image, or if I give any single one of these images, what I want to do is say, well, how does, a, how does an individual image actually project on to the eigenvectors? Okay? So my projection, let's call it projection, is equal to, I just simply say, I want to project onto the eigenvector space, a single image onto that eigenvector space. Okay? That's going to be the key idea here, and that's going to tell you how any individual image is going to project onto these spaces. Okay? So the best way, uh, and by the way, this is the reshape vector, uh, this is the reshape picture in vector form of a specific image. So I can take, let's say, you know, image one, do this multiplication here, because I have the vector representation, do the multiplication, and what I'm going to get is now a projection onto the eigenvector space. Okay, what is, how much is it on eigenvector one, how much on eigenvector two, how much on eigenvector three, and what you're going to see this is going to give you a very unique way of representing each of the different celebrities. Okay? So those are going to be the concepts. Correlation matrices, what's, what's, what's common about the pictures? And then for each grouping of picture, you want to ask, well, what are, the, what are the features, or how does this project onto, how does Obama project onto these vectors versus Clooney versus Thatcher versus Matt Damon? And that's going to give you the ability to do discrimination tasks, to be able to identify uniquely who's who. Okay. You don't just look at the image, you look at the image projected onto this space. Okay? Again, all can be got by the SVD. So let's go back to the computer and see how we're doing here. All right. All right, so start walking through some code. So I already showed you this, which is the average faces. Uh oh. All right. L let me go see what I messed up here. This. Uh, something uh, out of memory. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's not cool. I just ran this this morning and I didn't have any problems with it. Let, let's try one more time. Uh, see, I'll see. Boom. It's gone. And let's try this one more time. We'll start running it and then we'll talk about it as we go. Let's pop that down. Oop. Still didn't like it. Okay. Wouldn't it be so unfortunate? Here I am demonstrating. I, I ran it all through this morning, and now look at this. It's kind of crashing. Help for options. Okay, so let's let's try if we can do just the SVD on this thing then. Um, instead, um, well, I actually would like to work with this. All right, so tell you what. Do a global, global replace. Find what? Let's do this. 120, 80, and we're going to cut it down a bit. We're going to replace it with 60 by 40 if there's an error problem. Uh, replace all. All right, good. And then we're going to also replace 120 times 80 with 60 times 40. Place all. Close. All right. 
Now let's try this. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, there's 120 by 80. Okay. Let's go look for our wherever it says 120. Find next. So this normally does not happen. Okay, so what we want to do is replace 120 by 80 with 60 by 40. Place all. Okay, place all. Wait, how come that didn't work? Oh, is there a space there? Okay, maybe it's 120 by 60 by 60 by 40. Place all. Huh. I don't know why that's not working. Find what? Boom. Place width. 60 by 40. Place all. Oh. All right. That worked. Okay, now let's try that again. All right, good, good, good. Let's put everything down for a minute and walk through. All right. Now I at least am in memory. <laughs> okay. So this is the kind of thing you hit when you program MATLAB. Not everything always goes as planned, but there we go. We recovered. You see this matrix D? That is where I stacked all. Here's where I take D transpose times D, and then Ikes find the biggest eigenvalues. Now what I'm going to do with this eigenvalues is I'm going to go here. This figure three is going to be the following. Figure three, in each subplot of figure three, I'm going to go, so for instance, if you look at this one here, it's going to go grab the first column of the vector matrix V. Remember, the matrix V are my eigenfaces. So this is the dominant eigenface that's correlated among all these 20 pictures. The second picture here, V2, it's a second column, third column, fourth column, fifth column. And finally, in the last picture, it's going to be basically plotting the diagonals and to show you how big they are. So here is the figure. Let's walk through it. You see this first picture. This is the average face of all 20 pictures. As I said, right, it's a picture, all these pictures, they all have noses, they all have eyes, they all have hair, they all have, you know, sort of a, a mouth and a chin, and you can see all that structure there, right? So when you think about correlating uh, even, more pic even more faces, this is your, your average face. And what we really want to do is look at what's what is Obama outside of the average face? What is Clooney outside the average face? Because the average face dominates everything. Here are the singular values. So here's the first eigenvalue. You see how much bigger this is than this one here? The first eigenvalue is almost 10 to the 9. And down here, an order and a half magnitude below it is a second eigenvalue corresponding to this second dominant eigenface, third, fourth, fifth. And you see they kind of decay. But the point is, this is huge in comparison to the others. So to do face recognition, we really want to use how are you or how are any of these pictures different from the average? Because it tells you that the average dominates. And so we want to use your projection onto these eigenvectors to tell you how you're different. OK. So let's go to figure four. And figure four, oop, here it is. Figure four is a projection uh, of the average face onto the eigenvector space. Okay, So here, when you start here, this is the amount of stuff for the Clooney picture. Project so if I take um, the average Clooney face and I project it onto eigenvectors 1, 2, 3 through 20, this is what it looks like. It's a histogram or just actually just a, a bar plot. However, I take uh, the average Obama face and I project it onto those. This is what it looks like. Here's the average Thatcher face. Here's the average Damon face. Here's what's important about this picture. Every person has a very different projection onto, that eigen, uh, onto those eigenvectors of faces. 
uh, which are generated from all 20 pictures. If you want to think about it, here, this is like a key. This is the encoding for George Clooney onto the eigenvectors. Here's the encoding for Obama of the average face onto the eigenvectors. Same with Thatcher and Damon. And they're all unique. And you could start using them to think about doing classification tasks. Like, oh, if I get anything that looks like this one here, it's probably George Clooney. If it looks kind of like this, it's Obama, and so forth. So we can use those to our advantage. And how we got that is we just did this projection. We took the average face, right? So here's the average face, average face. We reshaped it into a vector called vec c. So this is your this is your Clooney average face vector. And we just simply took that average vector and projected it onto the eigenvectors. And we got projection c. And what this does is it plotted all those. So we've already looked at that. Okay? So that's what we have. Now what we want to do is start looking beyond that. So that was figure four. Now we're going to figure five. We're going to do some testing. Here's where the face recognition comes along. Here's how this is going to work. In the top left, I have a new picture of Margaret Thatcher. And what I'm going to ask is the following question. I want to take this new picture of Margaret Thatcher. I'm going to resize her to 60 by 40 pixels. And I'm going to project her onto the eigenvector space. And this is what she looks like in the eigenvector space. Okay. And once I have that, I can say, well, what does the reconstruction of her face look like with those eigenvectors? So, right, so I have the full picture. I have the projection onto the eigenvector space. And here is what the reconstruction looks like. So it doesn't look too bad, does it? In fact, it kind of looks like Margaret Thatcher. It it's kind of looks like her average face in a way. So that's kind of good news. I took a new picture, and it sort of recognizes that. Now, what these bars on the right are is what I can do is say, tell you what, um, I'm going to now uh, ask, how does her average face project onto, uh, actually, well, OK, let, let's get back to this one in a moment. Uh, well, how does, her, how does her face project onto the five images I had of Margaret Thatcher's? And here's the scores. So like, for instance, the fourth picture of Margaret Thatcher looks, it's actually pretty close to where she is. That's where you get the minimum amount of error, right there. OK? So a new picture of Margaret Thatcher, and I can still reconstruct something that looks sort of like Margaret Thatcher. Over here, normally I would put a picture here. Meryl Streep, uh, about a year, two years ago, played Margaret Thatcher in a movie, The Iron Lady or something like this. And so I took her picture, but I can't get her picture and publish it in a book because it's owned by Paramount or something like this. But I projected that face onto this eigenspace, and you can see it's quite different. Here's the reconstruction, and here's how she does sort of compared to the five images. And you can see it's qu this is quite a bit worse than this. These errors are much slower than this. So she maybe doesn't do quite as good a job projecting to Margaret Thatcher. Then I could take Hillary Rodden Clinton, project it onto Margaret Thatcher's face. Now, there's no Hil Hillary Rodden Clinton pictures in here, but you see <coughs> she doesn't look quite as close to Margaret Thatcher as Margaret Thatcher, but she does do better than Meryl Streep. OK, so that's one thing to start thinking about, is you can actually start calculating the distance of a new picture to your given Margaret Thatcher pictures. You don't have to just do this with celebrities. You can come here and say, how about me? Like me, as in me, your, your professor. There I am, Nathan Kutz, professor of applied math 301. And you can ask the question, how do I project onto these eigenvector faces? And here's my projection. And if you construct with these projections, and the eigenvector space, this is what I look like. So I, I, don't, I don't think I'm quite as good looking in my eigenvector space. In fact, I kind of look like the guy from Mad Magazine uh, a little bit there. All you need is a little bit of a gap teeth, and then and I'd be like the Mad Magazine guy. Uh, but that's, that's what you get out of this. And then you could ask the question, all right, but who do I look most like? Now, 
I was hoping to look most like Clooney. But it turns out, if you look down here, here's my projection onto all the Clooney pictures. And by the way, I picked Clooney because, you know, uh, some of you think Clooney's a little old. Uh, and that's okay, because <laughs> I'm getting a little old. So I should try to compare myself to people like that versus, uh, you know, like someone like Justin Bieber. I, I would rather, it would quite be quite embarrassing to look like Justin Bieber for me. Uh, but looking like George Clooney, there's no shame in that, okay? So I just want to put that out there. Um, and it turns out, here's my scores. Good, I, I'm looking not so bad, but look at this. My best score is an Obama score right there. That's the lowest value. That's my best error away from that picture. Good thing I don't look like Thatcher. Matt Damon, almost. No, not so wet. I, either, I look more like Clooney or Obama, uh, not so much like Jason Bourne. Um, anyway, this is kind of the way you start playing with uh, image recognition. And if you remember, I mean, this, this is kind of fun because what you're doing here in computer vision, remember, come back up to here, is all you're doing is when you look at this, everything is about projecting down to these correlations of images and having these basic eigenvector or principal component structures that sort of dominate feature space. So a lot of times in the computer vision literature, they call it, the literature, they call it feature space. And feature space is, space is exactly what we can construct it here. These are the principal components where you reduce all the information onto to these key eigenvectors or eigenfaces. And what you do to do some kind of recognition task is you don't just look at the picture. You look at the picture projected onto the principal components and how much weighting they have in each principal direction because every person that we looked at had a very unique signature in principal component space. And so you can start saying, I want to look, when I do a recognition task, what I want to do is take a new picture, project it onto this space, and see which, which of the database am I closest to, and I will do a recognition based upon the principal component projection. And that's the key, not a pixel by pixel thing. And there's 20 directions we've used here, right? 20 principal components. So I'm projecting everything onto a 20-dimensional space. And in that 20-dimensional space, I'm going to construct a recognition algorithm. And some people have posited that this is exactly how we might do recognition, which is we don't do it pixel by pixel, because that's a huge number of points to do. But here, we're reducing it down to a low-dimensional 20 by 20 space. We're doing all the tasks on that low dimensional space. That's it. Singular value decomposition. Don't forget it. It's awesome. It's a great data analysis trick. And you should have that always in your head that this thing can do a lot of amazing things for you. All right. Have a good day. <laughs>